just when I think we're getting ahead of the pest situation with the ducks. They have been kept out of the garden, inside of the bird netting. But the one crop that I have desperately wanted this year, the one crop that I said I was going to grow 100 cans of green beans, I have had continued failure. <laughs> green beans are one of the easiest things to grow. Something that I have grown forever and never had an issue with. This year has been a nightmare. Now the ducks are making that nightmare worse. So I am going to put the fence back up. I left the poles in because I thought it was going to be a possibility. I didn't think they were going to eat the leaves. I thought they would possibly trample it more, but they're, apparently they're in here eating the leaves. So time to put the fabric back around this bed. Not the ideal situation because the fabric doesn't look very pretty, but we're going to have to use a lot of fabric in the garden this fall anyway to help fight against other pests like the cabbage moth on our brassicas. So it is something that I am used to seeing in the garden and we will be seeing a lot more of in our garden starting in the fall and going through the winter when we use it for frost fabric protection. <laughs> goodness y'all I know we we love our pollinators we really do and as fun as it was watching the hawk moth the other night taking nectar from those four o'clock flowers I'm just gonna have to show you guys the price that we paid for that here's the flowers that the hawk moths were attracted to they only bloom at night well right next to it tomato plant this is in the boys raised bed garden and look at all this damage notice the leaves stripped off the stalks I mean leaves eaten off of the stems you see the damage on the actual fruit of the tomatoes a lot of damage and I pulled off one two three four five I've got five of them crawling all over my hand right now. Various stages of growth. Yeah, they'll all turn into a beautiful hawk moth. Great. I love it. But I also love tomatoes. And there's a lot of tomatoes now that, that are never going to be eaten by us because they got snacked on by hornworms. So, lucky chickens are about to get a treat. Here at Wholesome Roots, we are able to maintain an organic approach to our garden because we implement IPM or Integrated Pest Management. One of the main principles of IPM is to know your threshold and when to step in and make a difference to help protect your crops. So knowing that threshold of how much damage is acceptable, you're always going to have pest damage in your garden no matter how careful you are. You will always have pest damage in your garden. It's just a matter of how to keep it under control and keep it from breaking through that threshold of too much damage like these ducks have caused. But there's also a balance to things. Allowing the occasional tomato hornworm to reach maturity ended up with us having an abundant amount of vining okra getting pollinated because we allowed some of the hawk moth to reach maturity and for that I'm grateful. I am not grateful for the fact that Ryan was pulling huge tomato hornworms off of the boys garden but you know what that's a sacrificial adjustment I'm willing to make in order to have more vining okra that gets pollinated so that we can have more fruit. Wow it's kind of like these 
pieces of fencing that I have been using to protect my garden were meant to be. Again, we have the perfect length to go all the way around this bed and it matches up perfectly. So what I'm gonna do now is put some ground staples to hold the fabric down and close this up. But I'm gonna know that this is the area where I can go in to harvest my green beans. Mm. It's kind of nice coming through my garden fence gate and coming in here and finding some cucumbers that are able to be harvested because the ducks didn't get them. Yay! We love cucumbers. So I just cut the seed tops, the blooms and seed heads of the lettuce off and put them in this bucket upside down so that it could catch. When the seeds fly off, they fly pretty fast and there's ants all over them, so I don't want to physically take the seeds off. So I'm just gonna set them in this bucket and let them fall out into the bucket. And this giant cucumber right here is for seeds. And I'm probably gonna plant some of these seeds now with the hopes that we will get a harvest before the beginning of November when we have our first frost. So this is the perfect ready for seed cucumber. You want it to get nice and big. Whereas these are the perfect for eating size. So this cucumber I've been really happy with. If anybody has any guesses as to what the cultivar variety it might be, I got it at an Asian market and everything else I got was Asian and heirloom type plants. So if you have any guesses, I'd love to put a name with this because it is the most delicious snacking and pickling cucumber I've ever grown. I, I really can genuinely say that and I am definitely gonna be growing it again even if I don't know its name. So as I go through the late summer and into fall, the garden starts to have yellowing leaves on my cucurbits, melon, squash. I try to trim off the worst of them and remove them from the plant without taking too much so that the growth up top where it's nice and green and lush will be stronger and won't come into contact with anything that could potentially harm them on these more spotted leaves. Some of these are spotted because of pests, some of them are spotted because of disease, some of them are spotted because of fungus. So it's basically, we're just trying to keep it nice and clean and neat in the garden. So some of these lower leaves on the Kajari melon are starting to show signs of some powdery mildew. So cleaning out some of these leaves is the best way to get the airflow in here better to help prevent that powdery mildew. And we have so many fruit developing that we just have to make sure that we protect them all. I mean, we are really going to have an amazing harvest. I don't know if you guys can see. There's a lot of new babies in there. So there's a lot of out with the old and in with the new happening here in the garden this time of year. And it's hard because I'm trying to make some difficult decisions on what can stay and what can go. And then I also have to plan for the stuff that is staying, like this squash bed. I'm keeping it. It's producing really great right now. So I'm leaving it. But what about when it stops producing? Do I have something that I can put in here that it won't be too late to put in as a seed? Or do I need to start some seeds in the trays so that they'll be ready to come in here? After a very slow start at growing, these wing beans are finally blooming and producing tiny little wing bean fruit. So I've never grown these before. I can say they are definitely a slow grower and Definitely for a long season. These snake gourd beans are definitely on my list to grow again. Here they are putting out more babies to replace the ones that the ducks ate. So that's good because we love them. They are delicious, y'all. And they are so easy to grow. They just grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And they keep vining and vining and vining. They're quite the happy plant with very little pest or disease issues, it seems. 
So, and the hummingbirds love the flowers and that makes me so happy because I love hummingbirds. So although these are newly planted tomatoes and they will be staying in here, I have all this space on either side of them that I can start fall seedlings and I am so here for it. And look, the solar flare setting fruit. The Sarah Black are starting to have little fruit. We will get some tomatoes out of these late season plantings. Sadly, tomato blight is taking over our first crop of tomatoes pretty severely. So these infected plants will have to be removed shortly. I am going to try to give these tomatoes that are just developing time to hopefully get close enough to ripening that I can harvest them and let them ripen inside. These plants are looking pretty sad too. There's a lot of blight on those. Those are our early girls. They're succumbing to the blight. These never really looked like robust plants, but they're producing fruit and they don't have a ton of blight. These don't have nearly as much blight, but they're covered in aphids like crazy. And I never have this many aphids on tomatoes. So yeah. Rather than trying to fight the season to extend it on these tomatoes, they're just not a whole lot worth it. They're not going to produce a lot more fruit anyway, so these beds will be converted over into some fall veggies. So while going through the garden and doing my maintenance work, I got a good little harvest. Ryan and I just had a water and cucumber break and it was delightful. But all these wonderful rewards from the garden, they don't come cheap. There is a lot of work into maintaining your garden. You have to go through the garden and clean up yellowing leaves, spotted leaves, look for disease and pests, treat them as needed, clean up older plants, put in new plants. It's a constant ebb and flow of work out here in the garden. And I'm not here to paint a picture that it's easy. I'm here to help you find ways to make gardening a little less stressful. So if you know some of the tips and tricks that I've teached you along the years that'll help you with your gardening journey, share them down below in the comments. Something that you've learned from me in the past that you think is an important thing to touch on again and to share with others. Hello, pretty moth. I sure do have some pretty moths here. That is gorgeous. It's pink and yellow, and it's furry.